Hey, I'm Matt Brender. It's nice to meet everybody here. I think I see most of the internet around the audience. I'm going to talk about workload generation. It's the beginning to a much, much longer conversation, but given just the time I have at B Brown Bag, I just want to talk about a couple things here. So I'm Matt Brender. I'm a blogger, speaker. Happy to be a V expert this year. You can reach out to me really easily on the Twitters. Um, I'd like to talk about how neckbeards are the people of the future, particularly those that are coding it. And then uh, I also really like cats and talk about technology and our careers on the Geek Whispers, which if you stick around for after this, we'll be doing a live one up here. But what I want to talk to you today about is really about workload generation. Many of us here are either vendors like I am at Infinio, or you are end customers who are always looking for what the next gear is you're going to be running in your environment. So you're curious, how do I perform a, a proper proof of concept. Um, there are a few mistakes we commonly run into in the technology field when you're dealing with storage. So I just want to go over the top two. Again, this is a much, much broader conversation. So I just want to give you a couple tips and end with a, a small formula that will get you a little bit closer to testing your environment in, uh, in a way that really means something to your business as opposed to just shooting some I.O. across the wire and seeing if the storage, in fact, can accept I.O. So many of us start here <laughs> that I'd like to proof, proof of concept your system, and I spun up Iometer. And things either, oh, they look great or they look terrible. It, it doesn't really matter at that point, because uh, the conversation really has begun on the wrong foot, that uh, what are we trying to test, and why are we testing in the architecture that we're designed? Um, I knew I wanted to explore this conversation much more after a friend of mine uh, read a blog post that I wrote called um, you're doing it wrong, uh, performance testing, you're doing it wrong. And uh, he reached out to me and, and said that as somebody who's trying to sell storage, it is, and his storage is content aware uh, at Tintree, he, he's having the toughest time explaining to people why one or two instances of Iometer is insufficient for doing anything that's going to simulate your actual workload and really tell you whether or not your storage is going to be properly met by this new product versus your old product. So, here are the things that I've learned so far. The very first thing we need to talk about is your environment and the scale of your environment. So normally, uh, what we have going on here, we have multiple servers, at least three, if not a dozen, if not a thousand these days, uh, with hundreds to thousands of virtual machines on top of them. That's plumbed into the current existing storage architecture that has backend spindles or SSDs, whatever, and that pathway is going. So you introduce a new storage device, right? And you want to test that. So the really proper way to be testing that would be to migrate all of your data over in this perfect world where vendors rule it. You migrate all your data over to your new storage, you plumb it in, and you, you figure out whether that new system actually performs the way you want it to during peak workloads. But who in the world is going to do that? None of us. No one's, no one's allowed to bring production down, move all that stuff over to a new system just to stress test and see what it will look like. So what do we end up doing instead we add a single virtual machine to one of the servers in our massive clusters of virtual machines, and we pipe that to that new system and usually spin up Iometer on top of it because it's the de facto standard. What else are you going to use? So we use Iometer. We send you know, as many IOPS as you can from a single VM, and you either look at the report and you say, hey, latencies are good, or response time's good, I like it, we're going to buy this thing, and they bought me a nice lunch. Or you say, hey, you know, that's not really doing what I want. Uh, what we fundamentally lost in this process is the actual scale of our environment. You have hundreds of dynamic workloads happening and blending together in a way that's actually meaningful and adds great variance to uh, the I.O. that's coming into write cache and destaging to the disk. And until you simulate at least a portion of that, you have no idea how that new storage device is going to work. Um, so. This is just as true for server-side caching, which is where I fall in at, at Infinio. So whether that's cached onto SSD or to DRAM, really the, the scale of the environment needs to be proper to the scale of your production environment. Uh, now, I don't expect you to, to run thousands and thousands of workloads and, and start cloning your exchange over and trying to run that. But you should be able to profile things. And we'll get into a few tools that will get you closer there. Uh, and there, there's a great irony to this, right? We're, we're trying to simulate the real world in order to test whether our new system is going to work. Because fundamentally, you're not going to remove your old storage and just throw in the new one to test it and then go back if you, if you don't like it. Uh, that is way too operationally complex. So the irony isn't lost on me. But uh, here are a couple more tips to uh, dig into it. 
Um, when you're dealing with workload types, a few checkboxes you need to check to know that you're doing your due diligence as a storage or virtualization admin is understanding the number of virtual machines per server, the number of threads uh, your workloads are dealing with and on those virtual machines. And you can see through the rest. Uh, what I'm really interested in is both simulating regular steady stream workload which um, is often a, a good mix of read and writes, but also peak workloads, which is extremely often has to do with read requests and um, common data being read from a, a read area that could be cold on nearline SAS at the very back of your environment. And if you don't know to test both peak and steady state, you may end up with some very high latency spikes in your environment that could disrupt your, your workflow during the day. Uh, working set's important too. I mean, uh, Iometer is just gonna shoot a big uh, group of ones and zeros, but if you have an active working set across multiple SQL databases that are all going to dynamically generate and keep uh, hitting those requests over and over again, you want to make sure whatever that, uh, that size of information is going to fit inside a cache of whatever new system you have so you get the best and most predictable response times. So understanding a little bit about your data, which is part of the problem why this is so freaking hard, and it's part of the solution is being aware of what you need to know. Measuring latency is also important because if you don't know the latency of the I.O. going over the wire, it's like saying you have a whole lot of money and you're not allowed to spend it. Um, it you, you need to be able to deliver that service at the right stream at the right time or your virtual machines are not going to respond very well and, uh, and many applications will fall over. So paying attention both to the I.O. capacity and the latency levels that respond to this. The other one I want to talk about that I found very interesting as I went through the different tools w was a really simple fundamental difference that um, storage systems today are way more interesting than they used to be. Uh, they used to just care about location. Um, and I'll go into what that means, but it's, it's where, where things fall on the disk. Now we're very content aware. We have systems that are brilliant at detecting individual pieces of content and deduplicating them on the fly, in line, in, uh, in server-side caching, and in primary storage. Um, so well, what does this really mean? This is a really simple way I understand this to be. There's kind of the, the what we see as end users or um, s server admins. And then there's what the storage is seeing and how they're processing it. And then how is it actually stored on disk? So if we check out location-based system, for instance, we have maybe a golden image of a number of our virtual desktops, um, the suites that we're running across all of our virtual machines, and uh, a collection of GIFs that were emailed out to everybody, a couple of our favorites, SpongeBob and the guys going, yay. Um, and those are all mapped to logical block addresses on specific disks, spindles, or SSDs on the back end. Uh, and that's a one-to-one -one mapping. If you have multiple copies, you have multiple copies of the, those blocks across that. That's fine uh, in any traditional architecture. Um, what's different, though, if you have a content-aware system, you generally have a SHA-1 hash of that or some other hashing al algorithm that points down to the disk where that information is stored. But the hash is actually uh, unique, so any content that comes back over with the same hash will not be stored twice in any of the, the systems that you see that are doing really interesting inline deduplication of primary storage. So basically what you see and what your storage sees is identical. You only ever need one copy of that piece of data and it's stored only in one place across the system. So this is why, fundamentally why Iometer is not the right choice for most storage testing on content aware systems because all Iometer sees is this stuff, logical block addresses, shooting logical block addresses everywhere and filling up uh, ones and zeros that feels very much like a block. Um, but we're dealing with content these days and it's way more interesting to simulate the content and see if the system will meet your needs um, knowing that it, it is a that, uh, that skill set is available to it to see and deduplicate and process and use efficient space um, inside either disk or the same goes for DRAM. Um, which not a lot of people are using right now, but it is very powerful uh, as a solution in deduplicating right in RAM and providing latency reduction from there. So uh, it, it comes down now to choosing the right tool. Um, a lot of us, a lot of the times we're given a hammer, but sometimes we have a screw in front of us. Um, and I played with a bunch along the way. Again, I don't have all the answers here, but I do have a, a small list that I'm happy to talk to you about. And based on our conversation about content and location awareness, 
Here are a few that I've gone over as I tried to figure out what in the hell I was going to do with uh, generating workload for the content aware software that I work on. Um, I did a lot of, I knew right away that Iometer wasn't going to be the right choice, but I, I did want to use IO Analyzer, which is a VMware fling, and that actually packages up Iometer and has a web GUI that lets you manage a distributed number of them. So it fits the problem of scale. You're able to fix the scale problem. You're still only attacking it from a location-based system. So you have to know whether or not your system is content aware, because IO Analyzer will not stress that in the way you want it to. Um, SQL stress is interesting uh, for more for a database size, but it is also focused just on location. There's not a lot of con there's not unique content in there seeded across multiple instances, so you're you might as well be using Iometer at that point. Um, what I what when things got interesting was when I found FIO, um, and FIO is incredibly powerful Linux. Uh, Linux-based tool that allows you to give seed files to each and every one of your streams and spin up multiple threads at different instances. Um, it sounds complex, but it's actually stupidly easy to install on any Linux system. Um, and really what I hope to do uh, in the next month is to package that up in a way and distribute that out to the community so that it's easy to spin that up and spread out as many instances as you need and start pushing I.O. in a meaningful way. Um, VD Benchmark, uh, VD Bench, I've heard great things about, but I didn't explore as much. And Login VSI, I did a bunch of testing for uh, VDI. That's a pay for service that's really, really powerful at simulating virtual desktops. It's actually a set of scripts that runs on each and every one of the desktops instances and shows you um, and, and acts as an actual user consuming media on the internet and things like that. So if you're looking for a large scale VDI deployment, I'd recommend giving that a go. So here's a little formula. I figured we're mostly geeks here, so let's put it in uh, some crappy syntax that looks something like Python. Um, the formula, piece by piece. First off, when you're testing new storage system X, Y, Z, uh, make sure the, the scale of your environment is at least representative of your scale of production. Right? We, we talked about that, spinning up a single instance of a virtual machine and pushing I.O. over the stream. It's just not going to do you or your storage or your, your proof of concept any justice. So you, you need to make sure that as you're setting this up, uh, you may need an, another environment in order to test this properly. Next, talk about the actual I.O. throughput. And I.O. is not just the amount of I.O. It's also the latency level that accompanies it. You want to make sure that um, VMware, for instance, says with storage I.O. control, it starts taking remediative action, I believe, at 30 milliseconds. Um, so you want to make sure that your latency stays below 30 milliseconds if you want to stay within the right range of uh, quality content coming from your storage system. Um, and you both want to measure peak and steady state. Because peak is what will kill you. Um, you will have a spike of read requests that will crush your environment. And you don't want to know that uh, after you buy the new product. You want to know that before. Um, and think about the growth. Growth is always one of those nebulous things. Uh, think about how you're growing your environment over time. After that, once you know that, you now know the basic difference between location and content aware uh, storage devices. So make sure you're asking whoever you're POCing, or if you're the storage vendor, you understand what your system does and how it processes data. And if you do have a system that is content aware, make sure that you're using a tool or recommending a tool to your customers that's also content aware. So definitely just scratching the surface in a larger conversation, but really looking forward to talking more. Um, you can either come talk to me. I'm doing a lot of demos at the booth for Infineo, giving away uh, a MakerBot as well, which is pretty awesome if you want to see it run in there. And please, please reach out to me on the internet. I love using Twitter to learn it with you and from you. And uh, happy to share what I know as well. And I'll be blogging a lot about what I learned along the way. So thank you all.